Hey, we're going. Yeah, man, it's Mr. Garfield here. And today we'll be looking at a complex numbers question for the K-Pure Mathematics Unit 2. All right, so this question is taken from the May-June 2021 past paper. Okay, so here we have a question. In question one, it says two complex numbers are given as Z1 equals the square root of five over three plus the square root of five times i, and Z2 equals two minus two i. All right, so part one of the question says, show that the complex number Z1 over Z2 equals the square root of five over six multiplied by e to the i times seven pi over 12. And part two says, hence, without using a calculator, Determine the value of Z1 divided by Z2 all squared. Okay, let us do the first part of this question. So we're going to do part 1A I. All right, so let's look at the solution. So it gave us two complex numbers in its algebraic form, and they want us to show that when we divide Z1 by Z2, we get the complex number root five over six times e to the i times seven pi over 12. All right, and please note that that result there is in exponential form, right? So how do we get this answer? Well, if you think about it, we can do two different ways, All right? So the first method would be to divide z1 by z2 when both of the complex numbers are in its algebraic form like this, right? And then whatever we get as our answer, we convert that complex number, which is going to be in algebraic form as well, to the exponential form, right? So that's one way. Or what we could do is to convert both Z1 and Z2 in the exponential form, all right? And then we divide Z1 by Z2 and we get our answer. Now, out of the two methods that I've stated, which one do you think would be the easier approach? Well, I hope you said the second method will be the easier approach because that is the approach that I'll be taking here today, all right? So, when, whenever we have complex numbers in its exponential form, it is very easy to divide them, all right? Very, very easy. So we're gonna take that approach here. So I'm now going to convert Z1 into its exponential form. So I'm gonna need two things. I'm going to need the modulus of the complex number Z1, which is going to be our R1, and I'm going to need my argument, which is going to be theta one, right? So let us calculate that. So I'm going to need the modulus, right? So I'm going to need R1, and that is going to be equal to the square root of root five divided by three squared plus, we're gonna have root five squared, right? So you have to remember that whenever we're finding the modulus of a complex number, it is the square of the real part plus the square of the imaginary part, right? And once you add those up, it is the square root, okay? Good. So let us continue down here now. All right, so let's simplify this R1 here. So R1 is going to be equal to the square root. When I square the root of five over three, I will get five over three, all right? Because the square root will cancel over the square. And then I will have plus, the square of root five is just going to be five, all right? Again, the root and the, the square will cancel out. So now I have the square root, of five over three plus five, which can be written as the square root of 
of over 3 plus 5 is the same as 20 divided by 3. All right, and that is my R1. Good. Now, this is not in its simplified form, so I'm going to simplify this root here. Okay. Now, whenever we take the root of a fraction, it means that it is the same as the root of the numerator, so that's the root of 20, divided by the root of 3. All right, so we're doing square root. So whenever we're taking the square root of a fraction, it is the square root of the numerator divided by the square root of the denominator. All right, and you would have met that concept in pure mathematics unit one, and that is R1. Okay. Now, it is still not in simplified form because I can simplify the square root of 20. All right, so I'm going to do that over here, this side, so that you can see it. So I have the square root of 20, and I know that 20 can be written as 4 multiplied by 5. Okay, so this is going to be equal to, if I have the square root of 4 times 5, that is the same as the square root of four multiplied by the square root of five. Right? Remember that you'd have made this concept in K-Pure Mathematics Unit 1 when you are talking about thirds. Okay? So you have to know the properties of thirds. So the square root of four here is two multiplied by the square root of five. All right? So I'm going to replace the square root of 20 as two root five. All right? So let's scroll down a bit. Okay, so I can now say that R1 is going to be equal to two times the square root of five for the numerator and the denominator will not change, that is the square root of two. Okay, good. Now I'm going to leave it like this. I could go further, right? But I'm gonna leave it like this um, because this, when, it, when it's written in this form, I'll be able to get my answer much quicker. All right, so I'm gonna leave it in that form. And so I now have R1, which is the absolute value. Remember that this is the absolute value of Z1, the complex number Z1, right? So I now need the argument, right? The principal argument. So I'm now going to say, let alpha one be the acute angle such that alpha one equals the tan inverse of y over x. Okay, good. So let me just show you a visual representation of the complex number Z1. Right, so let me see if I can draw a line here. All right, so that's going to be my imaginary axis. And this is going to be my real axis. Good. So, So this is going to be my real axis. This is going to be my imaginary axis. All right. And we're going to write down the complex number Z1, which is the square root of 5 over 3 plus the square root of 5i. All right. So the square root of 5 over 3 is going to be somewhere here on the real axis. OK. And the square root of five is going to be somewhere up here on the imaginary axis. Okay, so this is going to be my complex number. All right, so I'm now going to just draw a line from the origin to that point there, right? So that is going to be Z. All right, so that's going to give me Z1 here. So here is going to be my absolute value. This is Z1, 
and here is going to be my absolute value of Z1. Okay, good. And this angle here, this angle right here is going to be my argument, right? Theta. And I'm saying that theta is the same as alpha. All right. Whenever the complex number is in the first quadrant here, then theta is going to be the same as alpha. All right. Remember, whenever the complex numbers are in different quadrants, we're going to have to write theta in terms of alpha. Right? So theta is going to be equal to alpha in that case. Um, so whenever we find the tan inverse of the imaginary part over the real part, right, with the absolute values, that is going to give me the same answer as alpha. Right, so let me come down here now. So I can now say that alpha one is going to be equal to the tan inverse of y over x. Y just represents the imaginary part, right, which is going to be the square root of five. And I'm dividing that by the real part, which is the square root of five. It's the square root of five over three, which can be written as the square root of five divided by the square root of three. All right, we just talked about the property of thirds. So that is gonna be equal to the tan inverse of the square root of five. When I divide that by this fraction there in the denominator, I reciprocate it. So I will get the square root of three divided by the square root of five, all right? Good. Now, clearly you can see that these two will cancel out, which leaves me with alpha one equals the tan inverse of root three modulus, right? But we know that the modulus of square root of three is the square root of three, right? So this is our alpha one here, and this is our theta one. All right. So the absolute value of root three is just root three. So whenever we put tan inverse of root three into our calculator, we will get pi over three radian. All right, and that is our alpha one. Good. So I'm now going to write a statement here and say, since the complex number Z1, is in the first quadrant, so that's quadrant one, right? Then theta one, which is our argument, right? Our principal argument of Z1, that is going to be equal to alpha one, right? So therefore, theta one is going to be equal to our alpha one there, which is pi over three radian. Okay, good. So we now have the modulus of the complex number Z1, which is R1, and we have the argument theta1, right? So I could simply rewrite the complex number Z1 in its exponential form, right? But before I do that, I'm going to look at the second one, the second complex number Z2, right? And I'm gonna find the absolute value of Z2 and also its argument, okay? Let's do that first. And then I'm gonna rewrite both of them in, in its exponential form. So Z2 is equal to two minus two I, all right? So I can say that R2, which is the absolute value of Z2, all right, that is gonna be equal to the square root of the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared, okay? So this equals the square root, two squared is four, plus the negative two squared is also four, 
All right, so let me scroll down a bit. So this equals the square root of four plus four, which we know is eight, all right? And I'm just gonna simplify this root eight here. So I can rewrite this as the square root of four times two. And we know that four times two is eight. And using the properties of thirds, I can say that this is the same as the square root of four multiplied by the square root of two. Okay, good. And this is now equal to the square root of four is two, and I'm multiplying that by root two. And that is going to be R2, all right? And remember R2 is just the absolute value of the complex number z. Okay, great. Now let us calculate the let's calculate the argument of the complex number z2, which is going to be theta 2. All right. So I'm going to say let alpha 2 be the acute angle. Let alpha 2 be the acute angle such that alpha 2 equals the tan inverse absolute value of the imaginary part over the real part. Okay, so we know that Z, we know that Z2, let me just write it here for you, Z2 equals 2 minus 2i, right? So it means that alpha 2 is going to be equal to the tan inverse absolute value of the imaginary part is negative 2, divided by the real part which is two, and that simplifies to the tan inverse of negative two over two is negative one, all right? And we know that the absolute value of negative one is a positive one. So if you put in tan, in, tan inverse of one into your calculator, you will get pi over four radian, right? Which is equivalent to 45 degrees. That's pi over four radians, and that is our alpha two. Okay, so let me just do a little sketch of the complex number here, two minus two i, right? So here is gonna be my imaginary axis, and here is gonna be my real axis. Okay. All right. So let me just label the axis now. This is our real axis. And this is our imaginary axis. All right. Now, two, the real part is two. So two can be found somewhere here on the real axis and for the imaginary axis negative two is going to be somewhere here right so this point here is going to give me z two all right so let me just draw the line here now from the origin to that point great Okay, so that this distance here is gonna give me my absolute value of Z2, right? Which is actually R2, okay? And this angle here, remember now that this angle here is actually my theta two, okay? That angle there is my theta two, but because the complex number is in the fourth quadrant, right? It means that my theta two is going to be negative alpha two. Okay, so it means that so what I'm actually saying here is this. So since Z2, the complex number Z2 
is in quadrant four, right? The fourth quadrant. Then it means theta two, which is actually the argument of Z two is going to be equal to negative alpha, All right? So whatever alpha, alpha two is, we take the negative of it, okay? So therefore, I can say that theta two is going to be negative pi over four radian, All right? Good. So that is our answer. So since we now have the absolute value of the complex number and the argument for both complex numbers, I'm now going to rewrite the complex numbers in its exponential form. So I can now say that Z1, right? We know that Z1 equals what now? Z1 is going to be equal to the square root of five over three, All right? Let's just check it. So Z1 is the square root of five over three plus root five i plus root five i. Okay. And we want to write it in the form R1 e to the theta one, all right? So, Give me a minute. All right, just give me a minute. Right, sorry about that. Sometimes the technology can be very difficult, very unfortunate. Right, so what I was saying now is that Z1 equals the square root of 5 over 3 plus root 5i, and I want to write it in its exponential form, which is R1e to the theta 1i. Okay, so it means that Z1 is going to be equal to what was R1? Let's go back at it. All right, so R1 is 2 root 5 over root 3. Okay, that's 2 root 5 over root 3. And so that's R1 multiplied by e to the theta 1i. Remember that theta 1 we calculated to be pi over 3. All right, so that's pi over 3i. Okay, so that is Z1 in, in its exponential form. Let us now focus on Z2. All right, so remember Z2 was actually 2 minus 2i, right? And we want to write that in its exponential form, which is R2 e to the theta 2i. So I can say that Z2 equals R2, or value for R2 was what? 2 root 2. All right, and I multiply that by e to the theta two i. Theta two, we calculated to be negative five over four radians. That's negative five, five over four radians times i. Okay, good. So since we have the complex numbers in its exponential form, we're going to know, look back at what the question said. The question said that they wanted z1 divided by z2, right? So let us calculate that here now. So therefore I can say that Z1 divided by Z2 is equal to two times the square root of five over the square root of three e to the pi over three i, right? So that is Z1. And I'm dividing that by Z2, which is actually what? Two times the square root of two e to the negative pi over 4i. Good. So all we have to do now is just to simplify this expression. So I can now say that this is going to be equal to 
if I divide 2 root 5 over root 3 by 2 root 2, it means that I will have to reciprocate, all right, the fraction in the denominator. So this is going to be the same as 2 times the square root of 5 divided by the square root of 3. And when I reciprocate now, I will say multiplied by 1 over 2 times the square root of 3. Okay? Good. So that is what we, that, that is the value that we will get for R. Okay? And as it relates to the E's now, if you remember your laws of indices, remember it says that if I am dividing indices of the same base, right, then it means that I will have to subtract the exponent. If I'm dividing by the same base, I will have to subtract the exponents or subtract the powers. So it means that I will have e to the power pi over 3i, subtracting the power now, so minus the power in the denominator, which is negative pi over 4i. Okay, good. So I just have to simplify this further now. So I can now say that this is going to be equal to, obviously, we can see that the twos here will cancel out, right? So what I will left with, what I will be left with is the square root of five in the numerator. And in the denominator, I have the square root of three being multiplied by the square root of two, okay? And then I have e, then I have e to the power of pi over three i. And remember, there are two negatives here, so I will have a positive pi over four i, okay? So this can still be simplified, so I'm going to simplify this further. So I will have the square root of five divided by the square root of three multiplied by the square root of two is actually equal to the square root of six. If you remember your properties of thirds, right? And as it relates to the e now, I can say e, I can factor the i, okay? If I factor the i, I will get pi over three plus pi over four times i. All right, excellent. So simplify further now. So this is my last step. So the square root of five over the square root of six can be written as the square root of five over six multiplied by e to the power of pi over three plus pi over four is the same as seven pi over 12 when you add them. All right, times i. And that is Z1 divided by Z2. Okay, so let us look if we got the answer. Yes, we did. The square root of 5 over 6 times E to the 7 pi over 12 times I. All right, they put the, the I in front of the, the argument. Doesn't matter where you want to put the I. All right, so I can now say shown. All right, so that's to show that result. So I can say shown. Okay, so now we have finished the first part of the question. Okay, now the second part says, hence, without using a calculator, determine the value of Z1 divided by Z2 all squared. Okay, now when a question says hence, right? Once it says hence, it should indicate to you that you're going to have to use something from the previous question to know answer this question. All right. This is part two solution for one a. Okay. So we know that z1 divided by z2 is the complex number square root of five over six times e to the seven pi over twelve i. All right. And what did they ask us for now? Give it one more space. So they asked us for Z1 over Z2 squared, right? So we're squaring that complex number. So this is gonna be equal to squaring the complex number on the right-hand side, we get the square root of five over six times E to the seven pi over 12 I, 
and I'm squaring all of that, right? So if you're squaring this complex number, it means that you're gonna have to square each term, right? In the bracket there. So it means that I will have the square root of five over six squared multiplied by e to the power seven pi over 12 i squared. All right, so this is now equal to the square of root five over six is the same as five over six. And e for the second bracket, I will get e to the seven pi over 12 multiplied by two i. All right, so you have to multiply the two by the, the exponent in the bracket here, which is seven pi over 12 i. So I can now say, that what? If I cancel, I will say 2 into 12 is actually 6, right? So this is now equal to 5 over 6 e to the power of 7 pi over 6 pi. And that is my complex number z1 over z2 all squared. Okay? So that is the answer to this past paper question, right? For complex numbers in the K-Pair Mathematics Unit 2, May June 2021 examination. Okay, so I hope that this was helpful for you. If it was, please ensure to like the video and comment down below. All right, and please do not be afraid to ask questions. Okay, I am Mr. Garth Reed, Student Ambassador for the University of Technology, Jamaica, and I'm a mathematics teacher in training in the School of Mathematics and Statistics. I thank you for joining.